I'm joking. I always do that. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? I bring you on first. <laughs> and then I've been giving it to you so many times for doing that. Sorry. Well, good evening and welcome to another Saturday night of Shadow Whispers in the Night. And probably this is the first time that I've done this without muting myself, which I always mute myself. But it's obviously your host, Jenny, here. And then I have a fantastic best friend of mine, Michael, who is doing co-host with me tonight. Good evening. Thank you, good evening. Good evening. Thank good you evening. for having me. Thank you for being here. It's going to be fun. It is. It is going to be fun. We have Chris. Hi, Chris. Who's saying, hey, girl, hey? Who's saying, hey, girl, hey? Who's saying, hey, girl, hey? I know that is. I got hard. no idea. That's the fun of. It's a Facebook gem. user. It's no way of knowing. I guess. Click the link and it will give you permission. Oh, it's she says so Dawn. Fun. Hi, Dawn. <laughs> oh, my God. Is that Dawn from, I was going to say Dawn from Chicago, no? I know, Dawn. I know Dawn from Chicago. I haven't spoken. Oh, well, who, no, come on. It's Childers. There's only one Childers. <laughs> David Childers, what's the story with it, David? I kept watching that video over and over again. Let me tell you, my me and my daughter just laughed way too much, and I signed up. It is Dawn from Peoria in Chicago, um, and uh, yeah, I've signed up to the page, and I keep getting the video sent to me. So, you know, myself and Lulu are, are going through those videos, but so much fun. Hope you're feeling better. Hope you're feeling well. Uh, and then we have yeah, Dawn. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. It's been a while. Good Lord, we have to catch up. We have to catch up. Uh, Michael, how are you today? I'm doing good. <clears throat> Did you go swimming today? Actually, I ended up not going swimming. <clears throat> you didn't? No. I, yeah. You didn't go swimming today. I didn't do a lot today either. I didn't do a lot. But we do have a fantastic uh, guest on with us tonight. I know I was supposed to have this guest on with me last, it would be in summertime. I see him in the background spinning on his chair. <laughs> Look, can you hear? <laughs> He's trying to do an entrance. <laughs> I know. I think that's Howard. Is that Howard Jenny? Is that Mr. Howard? I have to I have to go into this. I have to go into this. Okay, so let me read out a little bit of a bio about this fantastic guest that we have on tonight. We have Michael Wong from PN PN Paranormal. Uh, Michael is 26 years of age from Bellingham in Washington. He started working with the paranormal back in October of 2020, uh, which is also called PN Paranormal, Pacific Northwest Paranormal. His interest in the paranormal really started with the curiosity of experiencing it for himself and being able to travel around the world to seek out history and listening to the people's experiences. Outside of the paranormal, Michael likes to um, film, uh, gosh, where is it now, sports, and going to, uh, and doing uh, snowboarding. Oh, Lord, my, my, once I skip, I miss the line, I skip it, for Christ's sake. Uh, overall, I'm very excited to see the growth with PM Paranormal and looking forward to discovering more historical locations. So... See, when I read our stuff and I miss it line and I look away, that's when, you know, I lose my, my I lose it. Now, yes, David, we can see you now. We can see you now. We can see you now. Robin, what's the crack with you? We can see it. We can see it. And there's Miss Pamela. Pamela, you're getting the beginning of the show. Welcome, welcome. Um, okay, Sharon. Hi. Sharon, enjoy the show. Watch it. We have a fantastic guest. in the audience. Huh? Said so Scotland's in the audience. Scotland's in the in 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 the show tonight, and then we have Chris from uh, Scotland as well from Ghost Squad Scotland. So we're going to bring Mr. Michael Wong in with us. He's going to spin around in that chair. Hold on, Michael, face the wall and spin around. <laughs> <laughs> there you're on. <laughs> you're on. <laughs> How you doing? Well, hello. <laughs> Don't worry, that that was uh. Not not scripted. That was not scripted. It definitely wasn't scripted. Um, how are you? I am doing good. It's just another day in paradise, and it's summer, and just honestly, just been enjoying myself. Good, 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 good. Um, 
what time is it with you there now? You're about five hours behind us. So you know you're eight hours behind hey, us. It's, it's, uh, it's like one thirty right now. Oh my gosh. Michael, what time is it with you? 3.30. 9.30 here. See, that's the thing. When I do the shows in America, you all are trying to kill me. <laughs> you are trying to kill me. So many of my friends have seen daylight or oh, sunrise in, in Ireland. My dogs are kind of walking around and whatnot. I don't know what they're playing at. I don't know what they're eating. But here we go. Miss Tracy Days. Tracy, if you want to jump in, let me know and I'll send you the link. It's been a while. Yeah, you're on. Tracy, Tra oh, Tracy, if you want to, you can come in and, and you know, Tracy's one of my best friends. She's like my sister from another mister. And it's been a while since we've done a show together. Um, so if you, Tracy, if you want, want to come in, let me know, she'll bring you in. Michael from PN Paranormal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is going to be awkward. Oh, my dog's eating stuff. Um, okay, Tracy, that's no worries. Okay, love. I get it. It's okay. Throw your questions in. Everybody's got questions for Michael from PN Paranormal. Um, throw them in. We're going to be here. Uh, so, Michael, tell us a wee bit about yourself, how you got into the paranormal. Well, really all started just at a young age. I was watching a bunch of, like, ghost shows. I'm sure everyone, like, knows, like, Ghost Hunters, Ghost Ventures, Dead Files, all of them. And just watching them really kind of piqued my curiosity about the paranormal and Really, I want to just kind of like feel, experience it, and just kind of like throughout the last like few years now, after I finished college, I really wanted to really pursue this and actually take action, and that's where I did everything, bought the equipment, and I pretty much go to these different locations. I do research on it, and I interview the people, and then after that, I go off on my own and go find the paranormal. What was the first piece of equipment that you bought? Um, it was really realistically like the night vision camera because I want to be able to mm -hmm. see in the dark with it. Because I mean, I could just have a regular camera, but I will have to have a flashlight. It's just like too many things to like, have to hold. So I just have it all in one. And then after that, um, just kind of hearing noises or um, seeing stuff that I don't see with my own eyes. That was um, definitely the start of it. Do you like, I was going to say now my favorite piece of equipment, but apart from that, what is your favorite piece of equipment? Oh, Just easily. Nice. Um, I don't have it, but I plan on hope, hopefully getting it soon, but the structure light sensor camera. Do explain. It's pretty much like, for example, you have an iPad and then on the bottom, you, you know, like the like games, game console, the Xbox Connect when it first came out, like five, seven years ago. Yeah. And it pretty much it's like a device that shoots out green infrared dots. So in your eyes, you would see like green little dots spread out if you're pointing at a wall. Okay. And anything that's obviously naked to your eye that you can't see with your own eyes that crosses in front of it, um, when you attach the connect to the iPad, you realistically see a um, stick figure like, oh, which wow. pretty much is like a like an app like like a spirit and if you see them that's pretty much one way to capture incredible visual evidence and that's something that i find very interesting and i really hope to be able to use that to um find something that's unexplainable when it comes to intelligent responses oh that would be really amazing is there something is that, is that something you can build onto your iPad or it's, um it, it's more like a two point two um like a two different device so you have a connect it's just like a rectangular box and okay. you would connect it to the iPad so oh, is you that can like see a, it like Emmy saying is that like the SLS camera um kind of it's it's just like two different devices combined like connected but it's like connected through like a cord. I okay. Um, it's kind of hard to explain it, really. But I'm sure other people who are watching, they're like, "Hi, Matt." They, they, um, <laughs> oh, is that Matt Barron? That's Matt. What's up, Matt Barron. That's What's up, Matt. Matt Barron. Yeah. What story? Well, I was Barely, trying to. Very consulted. I know. I was trying to say to Michael, uh, PN Paranormal. It's like, what's the crack? What's the crack? And I'll end up 
Michael be going around Washington. Must have crack. Must have crack. And they were like, "What? No." But I'm going to get there. I'm, I'm going to, you know, you'll end up saying it. You'll end up saying it. What's, What's the crack? This, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Am I getting it right? Say it again. What's the crack? Am I getting it right? Perfect. <laughs> you're, you're ready. You're ready. <laughs> Tracy um, has a question for you. Miss Tracy, where is she? Oh, here we go. Okay, you go. Do you always research first? Um, yes, I always do do my research first. Most of the time when I reach out to the places and sometimes I always try to contact the historical society in the city that this haunted location is in. I usually try to do some like phone interviews, see if I can get a little bit more information. I try to do as much first. So when I show up and they do a day tour, I try to ask any specific questions that can make this that makes this place haunted like why is the reason that this specific location is haunted by seeing those like past current events like say for example like in montana there's this um haunted prison called um montana state prison and there was a riot well okay well with the riot who was involved and who like who who passed away and any stuff like that and that's one thing to just kind of like that's very important to like want to know. It's just the little, little details. Yeah, because I know a lot of people don't like to don't like to uh, research locations. They want everything fresh and a blank canvas. I yeah. would have to say myself, I'd like to have that little bit of history. Not a lot, just a little bit so I can go off on something. And, Absolutely. And, you know, and just kind of start from the beginning. What about you, Michael, from Texas? Yeah, I, I like having history of like knowing like events that happen there, not who's involved. Like I'm going tonight on an investigation at a military base that I know was World War II German B, German POW camp, um, and was involved with Vietnam. So by those three facets, and you know the Native Americans. That way, if I get somebody coming through, I know where to where to place them, and I don't think, sit there and think, "Oh, well, this is completely random," and discount it because I'm like, "This is a military base. Indians wouldn't be coming through." But in knowing that they were in the area, it's like, "Okay, I'm not going to discount it." Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what we would do, the um, the homework. I like to do a little bit of homework. I know Tracy, she's like a blank canvas. She literally goes in blind. She does nothing with it. I know, I remember, she was like coming to over to Ireland and coming to a location with me. And she was asking me about this and that, about the location that we were going to. And I'm not going to say much about it. But um, I don't know how she got it. And plus, one of the locations I do in her, here in Ireland, the museum. Millmount, uh, when Tracy was over, she just got too many things right. So I do wear a tinfoil hat when Tracy's over with me or when we're talking. And because she can tell me exactly what I'm thinking, because she would text me out of the blue and say, Jenny, what's wrong? And I'm like this, because she knows when there's something wrong with me. And, and I'm like, no, nothing, nothing. Like she, she knows, or if I ring her and she, you know, had the phone in her hand to ring me, it's like we're going to ring each other at the same time. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So I took that. Oh, look, the two of us now with the keyboard again. The photo on the wall, even Alan didn't know. I know, right, Tracy? I know. There's, there's, um, I, I was going through, obviously, your videos, Michael. Yeah. And, um, there's some locations I'm so interested in. Give me, yeah. tell me one of them. The Damas Brothel. The Dumas Brothel, yes. I'm saying dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just called a dumbass. I was like, brothel. the where? <laughs> I said, I knew I'd say it wrong. The Dumas. <laughs> the I'll Dumas. just change the title, add one more S to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was looking at it, I was, I, <laughs> and there's not even a B in it for me to say the dumbass. The Dumas. <laughs> but that's, that's me. You know, when you say a word, and all of a sudden there's a word there that's not there, but you're saying it. 
yeah, that that one. Look, it's very hot tonight, isn't it? Oh my god. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, because I, I was looking up, I was looking up a little bit, and I didn't want to give too much away. Do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah. So the Dumas brothel was the longest running brothel in U.S. history, and it was pretty much the main place where miners. After work, they would come there and they find a girl, they like pay for a price and then they obviously do their thing. And there's three levels to the brothel. There's the bottom, middle and the top. And you can kind of think about it from like a lower, middle and high class in terms of like how rich you are. So obviously if you go to the top floor, you get the more beautiful women. If you go to the lower floor, you get the not so beautiful women. And along with that, there was um, a woman, her name was Eleanor, and she was upstairs on the second floor. And there's this guy that came and like, she just pretty much like fell in love. And one day she was like waiting for, um, for him to like come back because this guy wanted to take her away from that lifestyle. And from what I heard, I don't know how much accurate it is just by all the research, but one of the girls that was working there with her gave her like this like little drink thing and eventually she pretty much like overdosed on it and she mm -hmm. obviously passed away um along with that like one thing that and obviously when i went there a second time the one thing i was really more terrified not not because i was in this building by myself the second time but when you're in the basement let me put it to you this way when you're like in the when you when you come to a brothel it's mainly more of like a happy vibe mm. because you know people want to have a good time so in the main and the upper level that's kind of what you feel you feel like happy and nothing negative everything's positive but when you go downstairs there's obviously no windows it's just a mm. dark basement and everything when i was down there it just felt super, super negative. Like there's like a dark, I don't want to use the word demonic, but let's just say a negative energy that is pretty much, I can feel it in me. It's like, like get out of here. Like mm. I didn't hear nothing, but it's just like, and then from there, I don't know if like how much you watched it, but I was like doing an EVP and then I had the REM pod in the hallway right next to me. And I was a few distance away where there's no way I can trigger it and it just went off and after that i just felt super scared inside and that's where i just kind of walked into my camera that was at the end of this hallway and like i i can't i can't do this i got i gotta leave and then after that mm -hmm. it's just like i felt normal again. It's like it's like that negativity is like off of me and did and you, you stay there by yourself yeah they um surprisingly because the owner right now he's having some health issues so he can't like really he doesn't have the energy to be able to um, Stay with you. Do, a, do a full um tour with you or anything like that like he would whenever like i was with him when i was with him that second time he was pretty much like having to hang on to like the railing to the wall or something because he's just like he you can see that he's just really weak and that wasn't like him when i first went there wow. like, two three years ago like two years ago and he was completely healthy the first time I met him, like normal. And then after that, it's just like, he's the opposite. And like, I, I haven't talked to him since, but I really um, hope he's doing better right now. Absolutely. We hope he's okay. That's and this, cool. and I, I don't know if this is like a coincidence. So the owners before them, um, cause they, cause the current owners, they own the building since like 2019, but then the previous owner owned the building for like a couple years. And one of the owners, and this is going to be kind of uh, surprising, but the owner's last owner, his name was Michael, su surprisingly. <laughs> um, he, um, he pretty much was the guy that um, from, like, I'm sure you guys heard, like, Ghost Adventure, like, he, like, was late to do the tour with them, and he just showed up, looked like he's just, like, looks like he was, like, on something. I don't know if it was drugs, alcohol, but he just didn't look normal. Okay. But eventually he passed away. I'm not sure how. And then now the, the new owners, which his name is David, he's now having health issues. Are and you kidding me? 
Yeah, so I don't know if this building is like cursed or something, but it's just like whoever owns it, it's just like their life's kind of, it's like they're having health has, issues. Has any of the previous owners, because I know there's been a list of owners. Yeah. There's been a long list of owners. Probably not all the death certificates are there for you to see if, if they no. passed natural, no, naturally, but in the last few were maybe a coincidence. Maybe, but like right before the, I think it was in 1981, that was the last year where that's the brothel was actually completely shut down. Um, that was where the last madam, her, um, oh shoot, I forgot her name. It's uh, Ru Ruby, Ruby. And she passed away when she was like in her nineties, which was, I think it was like early two yeah. thousands. And, but in yeah. like the eighties, when it was shut down, she got arrested again because uh, for like um tax evasion but i think it was like in the 50s where she the first time that she still owned the brothel at the time she got arrested because her her like um husband at that time was like beating her up like every day or something and she, like when people see her she was very unrecognizable yeah. and one day he she found him at this one bar playing like cards or something and she bought a pistol at this like pawn shop, went up to that bar, bought a drink, and then went in the back. And then the husband's like, oh, you came back for more, huh? And then she's like, let me, and then after she just waste, raised her gun and shot him in the head, he died. And, then the police... day and I'm not the one. Yeah. And then after that, police came and then they let her finish her training and they had to arrest her. She was arrested since the, like three years, but she only served nine months in jail. And then she was released and then Nothing. after that yeah so there's so much like history not like really deaths but just kind of so much like i guess negativity events that has happened throughout like practically like the last hundred years now that's just a phenomenal place that's a place i would love to i'd love to go to it do you find them just a more, more question about this location do you find they would be more negative negative towards the male or females um, I'll say mainly more males because this is why I heard from David when I went there and this was probably about back in May, like three, yeah, like three months ago. And one this other local paranormal group, they were there and this one guy, he um, is deaf, but he still does like investigation from what mm -hmm. someone from that group told me was it was on the second floor. Remember I said everything was all positive. Yeah. This guy apparently was like, something was like strangling this guy and literally he couldn't breathe. I'm like, wait, really? Like I've never experienced anything, anything like that. And then there's this other guy, um, other group. They actually have a TV show. I'm, have you guys heard of the show called The Ghosts of Devil's Perch? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think it was, his name was um, Tim, the, 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 the lead, the lead investigator, he mm -hmm. experienced the exact same thing in the exact same area upstairs on the second floor. And to me, I was like, wow, this is new. Like I've never heard or felt anything like that, even when I was by myself. And I'm not sure if there might be like that entity in the basement may have came upstairs that, that yeah. could cause that, but mm -hmm. who knows? There's a million reasons that, but, they said it's legit. It's no one's faking it. And uh, again, I'm not there, so I can't vouch for them or anything. Are you going to go back? We'll, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, for now, I, I don't know. Like I would love to one day again. I was going to say something about taking women in with you to see. Um, I, I would say definitely women would be effective um too as well especially like in the basement because like i said in the basements where all the negative activity does happen in terms of mm -hmm. like you, you you like definitely get that feeling you're not alone oh my god i'd be curious to see the length of ownership because my parents had a haunted house in new york that they lived in and they were given the keys the owner didn't even keep a set of keys and at when the six months was up, they were told you're gonna move. They'll move you out, meaning the ghosts would. 
And they oh. thought, oh, you know, this is funny. But mm-hmm. on the sixth month, all their stuff was on the outside on the porch, nicely boxed up, and the door was locked. And they have the only key. Oh my god, I'm I'm getting chills right now just hearing that. <laughs> so I'd be curious to see the length of ownerships because apparently no. some spirits will only tolerate people for so long and then they well, like, okay, you need to move on and next. Like to see you yeah. come, love to see you leave. Yeah, that, that is <laughs> yeah, that, that's crazy. <laughs> but that was run for two years from 1890 to 1892. Say it one more time. Did that brothel run for two years from 1890 to 1892? No, 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 no. It was like, um, like 91 year, like 1892 to 1981. So that was like 89 years, I think. Yeah. Or, or, Crazy. yeah, 89 years. Oh, I got my dates down wrong. I don't know how I did. Oh, it was Just... 91 years. 91 years. And did you say the ownership was she, she was arrested? She was arrested in her fifties or in in the fifties. In nineteen fifties, okay, she um, was for pretty much killing her husband, and then in the early eighties for tax invasion for not paying taxes to the building. I just made a face there that my friend Tracy would look at. You know when you don't say anything but your face says it all. Yeah. <laughs> and you just said, "Yeah, she got arrested for killing her husband." Okay. 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 I kind of, all right. Like, <laughs> yeah. doesn't say anything you know the same said at all <laughs> there's another fantastic location well not, I'm not going to say fantastic location but there is another one that I was looking at as well I've been going through all your videos there's one particular one that I love and I think I want to go to all of them which is the Goldfield Hotel oh the Goldfield Hotel yeah that place was yeah. definitely like because the one of the tour guys um she i forgot her name i there's just so many people to to like yeah. i I've, I've met it's just like i recognize her face i just yeah. don't know the names and i hope that you know if if we ever jenny if we ever like meet up in person ever one yeah. day like i i just know that i'm terrible with names and just if you forget my name michael let, i'll be texting you every week every night it's jenny jenny how can you forget jenny 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 <laughs> I, I meet up like you know what all right you can go home back to the US. Bye bye. <laughs> but <laughs> I've been spending your selfies of myself. Jenny, it's Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> I would. Oh my God. I would, I would do that. Block you me. Know, you can always now. send them the song Jenny on the Block. Oh, yeah. Jenny yeah. on the Block. <laughs> I'll just play that on the whole ride over. Jenny on the Block. Yeah, Jenny. Exactly. The, you know, other people, friends of mine, have, and I even changed the lines to those words, but I could not possibly sing it live on air because, um, anyway, continue. <laughs> the, the Goldfield Hotel. Um, it was the first running hotel with electricity and water in, in the entire West Coast of the United States at like 1907. And probably one of the um, like pretty much it, there's like rooms and stuff. There will be parts that like you can kind of see through a wall because they're right now they're renovating it. And this Goldfield Hotel is a very nice historic built hotel on the outside, but it's in the middle of nowhere in Nevada, like hmm. um, three hours north from Las Vegas. And literally, there's tr- they're currently like the their fought the, so these sons and their father their father just passed away. Like I think it was like. 20 years ago and now that their sons have ownership and they're oh, they, the sons don't want the building anymore so they're trying to sell this building for like four million dollars and this is in the middle of like nowhere like who's gonna want to buy this building and it's in this small town called goldfield there's only like 200 people most that lives in this town and after that oh, you're like hundreds of miles away from the nearest big town which is reno so it's four hours away from Reno and three hours away from Las Vegas. So it's literally in the middle of like a desert. Who would go to a location like that? I would. <laughs> but would I buy it? I mean, maybe if you just transfer to ownership, I would honestly just rebuild it and make it like a tourist attraction. But I don't know if I want to spend $4 million on that. If I was no. going for if I was given $4 million, I would literally just go travel. I literally would quit my job and just travel. 
That's yeah. why we do. Yeah. But overall, um, I would say just going through a hotel, it just felt like just like any other place. I, I definitely didn't feel um, alone. And the tour guy, she was with me and um, kind of like halfway through it, um, I was wanting to go back upstairs and she was going to come me kind of like help film me as I just take pictures so I can capture anything. And yeah. pretty much like we're about to walk up the stairs in this lobby to the second floor. And then as I got to the top, she was, she took like a couple steps. She's like, no, I, I don't know if you saw that in that video, but you can tell from her reaction that she did not want to go back upstairs. She's just yeah. like very affected by something negative. Like she said, there's like some sort of barrier that's just not allowing her to like go up. So and I was like, yeah. oh, that's okay. Like, that's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll take the camera. I'll just go upstairs and while I walk in around, I was deep down, honestly, terrified. Like I walked through the, uh, all the upper floors and I'm just walking around. And, um, when I was, I was definitely scared because when I was trying to stay calm, you can kind of tell in the camera that I'm just kind of talking to myself. That's kind of one way for me to, to remain calm. So I just kind of talk to myself to, make it look like I'm not scared, but deep down, I am actually terrified. I was going to say to you, oh my God, like, I tell you, I would wake up Louise to say, Louise, I'm going to the bathroom at like four in the morning, wake up. And oh, my, I would, let me tell you, I, I really would. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to say like, are you not You have afraid? another co-host. That's Charlie. Hi, yeah. Charlie. <laughs> my animals come alive every time I do a live. <laughs> Charlie, are you going out? No? You're going to think about it? Do you need a little push? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cold, I have to but, Cold. but um, pretty much the biggest thing that really scared me was we were on the, I believe it was, yes, it was the fourth floor where there's these two cowboys at like probably in the 1910s. They were having, they're playing a card game. One of them caught the mm -hmm. other person cheating. And pretty much they had like a little like, oh, at, you know, that type of thing. They'll have a shootout and yeah. they both died. And I also to say right here, there's a door right here. And I, my back's facing that door because I was looking at her. She was like her flashlight was like was acting really weird. Like it wasn't turning on and then it would turn on. So I was like, she handed it to me. And then next thing you know, I literally felt like 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 something's like rushing like running towards me and that's why you can see me in the video like kind of like like what's going on like what is that and then like i was like heart was beating so fast and literally to me it felt like an actual person was like running up to me and i i was just terrified and after that i was like okay we, we gotta go downstairs right now like I, I i don't know what that was and the whole building is locked down. There's no way anyone can get inside this building mm. other than going through the front door. Do you ever get like, I know we get the bleepers now when we're doing investigations, we get the bleepers. Yes. You know, do you, do you get the bleepers? We always get the yeah. bleepers, but we don't bleed them out sometimes. We don't bleed them uh, out. I always, I always do just because um, yeah. YouTube doesn't like. Oh, yeah. We wouldn't do it on YouTube. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if it was on any platform, I I, I, I would just kind of, there'd be no filter. I wouldn't really bleep anything. Well, but I was, sorry, go ahead. I was like, what the fuck was that? And then. I know. And I, it's normal. I think it's bloody normal. Yeah. That people say, you know, she's just like, oh, shit, oh my God. Because you're on location and you have people sitting there watching. But you're yeah. on the location and there's people running towards you or you're getting touched or anything like that. Uh, good night, Sharon. Good night. Look after yourself. Good night. Have a good night, Sharon. Good night. <laughs> but yeah, actually, what I do is because I, I try to watch what I'm saying, but if it slips out, I'm always like, I, "Oh, sorry, you know that, you know that slipped out," and but I'll just keep on going. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is what it is because you are going into the unknown and you don't know what is happening. You're being touched by something that you cannot see, so it's going to be normal and it's sh human to um, feel like that. I know I've said many bloopers. Oh, yes. I, I, oh, I have. Won't. Yes, I have. Yeah. Yes, I have. And and Louise, like I've said them uh, bloopers because um, I'm looking at my dog. I don't know how you managed to get on that chair. 
Because it's a small chair, but I don't know how he got on it. I was about to say, what was that sound? Yeah. I was seeing him get onto a chair. I don't know how he fits on it. <laughs> um, but yeah, especially the ones where Louise has her cat balls on, on the ground and you don't see them. And so you slip on them and you're doing a live. And there's a lot of, you know, sleepers. And I know Emmy has no filter. We know this, Emmy. We know this. No filters. No, she has no filter. We know this. My, this is, this is Lulu. Lulu. Louise is on my team. This is Lulu. We call her Lulu. Mine was, it was pitch black. And I stepped down on a little, like, Hot Wheels car that <laughs> ended up flying out to hit something. And I was like, holy. And I was like, sorry, guys. There was a car on the ground. It's pitch black. I didn't see it. <laughs> it was a toy. I've been called My bad. <laughs> I have been called names on it. Um, Michael, I wanted to ask you about the Goldfield Hotel. There's something that I'm intrigued with. It's about a lady named Elizabeth. Yeah, so Elizabeth was, and this is a very sad story, and probably yeah. the sad story I've ever been from any location I've been to. She pretty much, the owner, um, like, met this girl, which her name is Elizabeth, and he pretty much got her pregnant, pregnant and... He um, pretty much um, locked her up in room 102, which is like behind this wall of like this original lobby and to this like radiator. And for like obviously nine yeah. months, they, yeah. he would come and give her water, food. And then when the baby was born, like she died from like excessive bleeding. And I think it was in that room or just somewhere like, inside that building. 109. Or 109, yes. Yeah. And then with the baby, um, how the baby died, um, there's two sides and honestly there's really no actual documentation, but they said the beard was thrown down the mine shaft or was thrown down the stairs. Yeah. That's kind of like two things I heard, but with more research, it, there's no way mm -hmm. of really telling. That was George Wingfield. George Wingfield. Yes. He was the um, owner of the building. He um, owned banks. He was a political leader in Nevada and he was the main reason that the state of Nevada never collapsed financially during the Great Depression in the 1930s. Wow. Because he had a lot of business there, didn't he? He had a lot of business. Oh, yeah. He owned yeah. also like a, like a mining company. Mm. Yeah, he pretty much owned everything that... Yeah, he kept everything afloat in that, yes. in that place. Yes. And at, and at that point, Goldfield was the largest city, larger mm. than Las Vegas and Reno combined when it... Um, and they had like it was like 1900s that's where they had at most 20,000 people wow um the question did you I have that. any yeah so did you have any mediums at the investigation um i did not no do you investigate with mediums uh i haven't gone chance to i would love to i just don't really know too many mediums that would be would love to come out to the investigation i just don't have any connections yet hmm. i know a lot of people say would you investigate with mediums i always said no at the beginning no because um i just didn't i just didn't want it that's just how i ran i didn't want it but then again when i begin to know a location like the back of my hand then i'll take someone in who doesn't know the location who didn't yeah. look at the location, didn't do the history, didn't do the research, um, because, you know, that would irritate me a lot if they did. But I do know when Tracy came over to England, uh, came over to Ireland, came over to England. <laughs> England. <laughs> <laughs> same thing. Michael did, you the same? Michael, did you say the same thing? Same Not thing, me. Huh? Not me. <laughs> it, was, it, it was the other Michael. Oh, the law. Oh, listen. The same lesson. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> she's going. She's going off. When I mute, it means I'm going off. <laughs> that was a Pandora box opening over there. Uh, Miss Wong, we're gonna have a little history lesson, okay? <laughs> All right. Oh my gosh. Oh my lord. Uh, I forget what I was saying there now. Um, oh, you were talking about Linda coming over to Ireland. Oh, when Tracy came over to Ireland and uh, 
she came to the Drogheda Museum Millmount and she, uh, oh my goodness, like she got stuff from one particular area of the museum that even we didn't know. We knew a little bit, but not to what she knew. And like, no one knows this. Like I always say, history is not, all history is not written in the books. And um, uh, so when I was doing the audio work and whatnot, whatever was said on the audio matched to what Tracy said. And this is like, like she doesn't like the word medium. She doesn't call herself a medium or anything like that. Yeah. But the way she got the two of them together was kind of like, like, holy shit. Like that was kind of phenomenal. So yeah, um, I would listen to Tracy. We have a question from Pamela. Really Pamela. Pronoun- yeah, Pamela. Um, the only places I, I have not invested Garnet, but I would love to. I've heard lots of great, great, um, places or great um it's a great place to go to but i mainly gone to like deer lodge i'm gone gone to butte that's kind of really it butte there's like literally every building there's like haunted like the hospital mm-hmm. the brothel um i did the world museum mine where i, I investigated in underground uh mine and oh you yeah, did those, that yeah that, that was that was like yeah that was that was pretty creepy um wow but um, I would say right now, uh, I'll spoil a little bit. Uh, I actually plan on going back to Montana. I'm going to Libby, Montana, which is just kind of like near the, the border of Idaho, Montana. It's uh, called the Libby Hotel or the Hotel Libby. Yeah. And I will be, that'll be practically my. I wouldn't say next investigation, but the one after that, because I got one next month and then in October I'm going to Libby and then I got my last one of the year in November where I'm going to um, the East Coast. When so you do, do a lot of traveling. What was that? You do a lot of traveling. Yes, I do a lot of traveling and yes, they are very expensive and and oh, yes. She's you, just confirming what you said. I'm oh you yeah. Montana. I'm like on my phone, so I have to like look up a little closer because my ca- my ca- uh, computer does not have a camera on here. So it's, I mean, we could do the whole podcast. You just wouldn't be able to see me. You just hear my voice. Oh, we like to see video. We like to see the pictures. I know. I know when I was doing the show a few months ago uh, with Russell Edwards from uh, London, and um, so he said, Jenny, is it? podcast or vodcast and i said it's podcast he goes great because i'm on location and i'm like shut your face you're on location because he, <laughs> he he's the author of naming jack the ripper yeah and he has the original shawl and but that shawl is put away in the vaults and so on so myself and my team myself and lulu and nile are heading over to london on the 18th of feb 18th of february where am i getting what's wrong with me in months i said september a few nights ago um, we're heading over to London on the 18th of August. Oh, uh, wow. for the weekend. Now, wow. the funny thing is, if Louise is still watching, the funny thing is, I kept saying to Louise for weeks, Louise, let's organize a place to stay. We need to find a place to stay. So Louise was home last night after work and I was here. We're going through, you know, booking.com and see what we could get. I showed a few to Lou. She showed one to me. She goes, Jenny, I went ahead and booked it. I'm on the top of a bunk bed. Can you see me getting it? <laughs> I know, listen, the laugh I had today with a friend of mine and then Louise was sending me pictures of me falling off the bunk beds and I sent Lulu. Because Lou and I, uh, Lou and I are husband and wife. So they're in the bottom double bunk and I'm on the top bunk. So it's kind of like, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Yes. Like, because we know after that, when we kind of go around with Russell and whatnot, we're probably going to go and have a wee gin and tonic and whatnot. Can you see me climbing stairs after a gin and tonic and a bunk bed? Yeah. I said I'll go live when I do it. <laughs> Promise? <laughs> Promise. 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 Okay. <laughs> I go live when you see my arse getting up ladder and, and like onto a bunk bed. And I said to Louise, I'm going to start singing a song all night. You know that song, I know a song that will get on your nerves, get on your nerves. And you sing it for yes. like an hour or two. Yeah, so I said to Louise and Niall, I'm going to sing the voice and I'm going to fart as well because you're below me. <laughs> I'm, going to do, I'm going to do all of it because I'm in a bunk bed. 
Louis, I did. Louise is here. <laughs> Louise is here. <laughs> Louise, I'm filming. <laughs> <laughs> so we we got a past question from Linda about is are there underground mm -hmm. tunnels in view and yes there was right now they're definitely probably not accessible because but there was because that's how they would do all the um, prostitution they would um, probably for mining and all the stuff that you, you don't want people to see and that's mm -hmm. what they definitely yeah. had because there was definitely oh, wow. multiple there's multiple brothels in view um there is another one um i forgot what it was called but pretty much all the prostitutes they would like use that underground tunnel to like travel from one building to another mm -hmm. brothel to brothel and probably mining and stuff like that um, oh also also too i i know like obviously with the railroad built and stuff like chinese is one of the biggest ethnicities that was building that and people didn't like Chinese people like they didn't want them to be seen out in public so they would pretty much like like even with the Goldfield Hotel they pretty much they their place to stay was literally like in a basement where it like they were not allowed to be outside and wow. stuff like that so I don't know if that is in view I know Goldfield that was just that that what that was it but I'm sure maybe in view that probably was at some point that happened what a life to live yeah it's, no it's terrible yeah. yeah good lord um sorry i'm just going through this here someone is tagging me in something um i i know what i was asking you about investigating on your own like when you when you, when you go traveling you take you take camera people with you or you just do like literally you, you you just travel by yourself um there'll be a couple of times where i'll ask my friends hey do you want to come and help help me film this and sometimes yeah, yeah they'll they'll say yes because it's always great to have an extra hand to help me film to help me yeah at least accompany me accompany me when i'm in these places by myself because like i said it does get scary i'm not scared of the dark but it's just like if something happens i got pushed or something i did get hurt you know, it's always good to have someone there, but luckily, knock on with that, that will not happen in any upcoming investigations. Well, I hope, I hope not. Well, no, no, um, I'm not saying anything. I will PM you, but <laughs> I'll, PM, I'll PM you now in a second. <laughs> uh, when when you go to locations and you, okay, apart from that, when would you sleep on location? Or would you leave after a certain time or would you sleep on location it depends on a place most of the time i would like to try to stay there because you know it's like fishing when you go to a location nothing may something may not happen right away it, it, just, it just could be silent for the first four hours until boom you, you hear something or you see something or off the back you could see some but if you're there longer you know it gives you a higher chance of being able to capture somebody on film or hear something or something that's like unexplainable. Yes, I, but yes, I would love to sleep there if I can. I, I the only time I did was when my last investigation at the brothel in Montana. That was the only time ever I have stayed inside the building. Um I know I wouldn't. <laughs> it's not that, not that I'm afraid, is that I've seen too much heard too much and felt too much for me to say okay i'll stay here i just i i, I research and i investigate but i yeah. don't know if i'm enough to kind of stay there hey jenny big balls well i'll stay here you can touch me you can call my name out and i'll be like oh my god did you hear that run dude no i'm like <laughs> jenny what happened i thought this was unfiltered it is filter. <laughs> oh, you want me to unfilter it? <laughs> oh, you don't want to hear what I just said. No, you do not I, want to hear. What I, 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 I can read. I can read lip. At can times. You? Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. Can you read lips? Yeah. Sometimes. Me too. I depending can. On what I, depending on why I want to repeat, but I don't want to always repeat everything. 
Well, Pamela, is this a real question? Sorry, look at me. Sorry, look, I'm not doing it. Have you stayed in castles, Jenny? Is that a question for me, Pamela? No, I think she's saying you've stayed in castles. Oh, you've stayed in castles. Oh my God, my I tell you, I'm having a bloody long, uh, mm -hmm, long few weeks. You've stayed in castles. <laughs> I have stayed in castles, but um, um, there's one particular castle that I will sit in it by myself that I don't mind. Okay. And there's one castle that's Redwood Castle. That's you know Redwood Castle. I'll be back there in after Christmas. Um, and in Lep Castle, I would would I stay? No, there's one particular room where I would not stay in Lep Castle on my own, and that's just never going to happen. Why is that? Um, well, I can't tell you. Oh, okay. You know, I don't like, you know, I can tell you, but I'd rather not. Because if you ever investigated it, then I'm giving you away what I know. Or you, or you want me to tell you? Uh, we can keep it on the down low. Okay, so then if you ever went over to that castle, then, you know, if I told you, then... I would have to kill you. I'm joking. If I told you... <laughs> then I'll just haunt you. See, you better where's my, promise. Where's my recorders? I have one here beside me somewhere. Yeah, oh is that a promise, way. Michael? <laughs> I'll be a promise. It definitely will be an unfiltered recording when you capture what I said. Yay! <laughs> what are you going to say? What are you going to say? Hey, you, MF, it's me, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you'll have to find out. Uh, you know that's the funny thing about being paranormal investigators is everyone's like when i die i'm gonna haunt you we're like yes do it you better and they're like wait that was a threat i was like to us it's an invitation I know. oh no a challenge please, please don't haunt me please don't haunt me haunt me haunt me, haunt me. <laughs> and then you're gonna be like oh my god what did i get myself into Anthony, yo, Anthony, what the crack? Anthony, I have to mail you. Ask Jenny in Messenger. Ask me what. Lep is my favorite location. It is definitely one of my favorite locations. I have a few, but Lep is 100% one of them. I love Lep. I love Lep. There's so many rooms in Lep. And there's one particular room not many teams do. But let me tell you, it is a good place. We will be back very soon. We are locked and loaded, ready to go back into it. And I'm looking forward to it because I love Lep. I love Sean. I love the location. I love the area. And one of these days, I'm going to go home with one of his chickens because he has chick he has chickens outside. <laughs> he has chickens outside. <laughs> so if I had have had a carrier one day because one wasn't do you know one he rehoming one of them. If I had have had a cat carrier with me, I would have been taking one of Sean's chickens home from Lep Castle with me and say, "Hey, look, between dogs and cats and fish, I've got a new chicken." I like to, oh, a hen. I don't even know the chicken, difference between a chicken and a hen, and I work with rescue hens animals. Lay, uh, hens lay eggs, I believe. I Yeah, they do. Okay, so this was a hen then. And I work with animals. <laughs> no, but <laughs> which came first, a chicken or a hen? Uh, what's this? We've been lip reading Jenny on Lind, really? <laughs> You've been caught. You have been caught. <laughs> I'll have to go back and that and have a wee look at what I spent. Yeah. I will say, though, for me, I, I'm like, if somebody tells me they had an experience somewhere, it's yeah. like, I'm like, I got to go there now because I want to see if I can have that experience. It like, it pulls me in and it's like, oh, I got to I got to see if I can duplicate that or experience that. <laughs> That's what myself and yourself, Michael, were talking about the other night. Michael, Michael from Texas. We're talking about the other night. We were talking about how. In America, you have to travel like two or three days to get out of the county. Yeah. In Ireland, <laughs> what do you in a country in one day? Well, wow. Because we could say, right, I'm going to Spike Island in Cork. We'll be down, down there in about four or five hours. We're down, in, we're down in Spike Island in Cork. Or say, go up to Belfast or go up to Antrim or, you know, go to Galway or Mayo. We're there in a day. We're there in a few hours, not even a day, a few hours we're there. But in America, you, you've got to travel. You've got to take a flight or drive just to to get out of counties. It, I mean, I always say this, the, you know, there's, um, what did I say the other night? There's, uh, oh, 
gosh, I forget to say, and I said the other night, but there's, you know, there's nothing bad, bad in being like, you know, a small country <laughs> when we have to travel to investigate. Yeah. Hey, it's okay. It's good. Where would you like to investigate next, Michael? Where I want to investigate next? Well, this yeah. is kind of something I want to ask Michael from Texas, but um, I want to really go investigate. And this it's just right now, it's price is kind of like a big factor. So I want to go to Yorktown, Texas to the visit the Yorktown Memorial Hospital. Oh, oh yeah, I know that place. Yeah, that place mm -hmm. has some, I don't know, like lots of poltergeist activity. Yeah, it's oh, dark. Which, which, have you been there or done investigations there before? Uh, four or five times. And what's, what has the investigations been like for you personally? I will say there's a lot of heavy energy there. And it's kind of a twisted energy a little bit because it was run by nuns that weren't the friendliest of nuns. And they did surgeries there. And so it's like, wait a minute. And there's a jail cell even in the basement that oh. was added at some point, and that has activity. But I don't know if I can't find anything that says the cell the cell was original to the building, or if a prior owner brought it in just to like be like, hey, you know, here's because it's one single cell. Yeah. Oh. That's and it's cool. right next to where the priest sleeps. So I'm like, oh, that, that's a little creepy to have what? a cell next to where the priest is. Well, you oh see, you do that. Well, you shouldn't do that. But, you know, that'll be, I'd love to go there. You've got so many places over there I'd love to go to. Yeah. But um, um, my recommendation would be is if you're wanting to get in there, get in there sooner than later because one of the main structural walls in the basement is seriously buckled oh. so it's really a matter of time before it gives out or it may end up being like this is where we want to be we're gonna stop shifting and stabilize right there but yeah but yeah when you see the wall it's like you'll start to get the feeling this is sketchy as all get out and it's but i've had evps there i've had Strange sounds of footsteps there. Any negativity as in towards you? Not towards me, but one of the things that got my attention was there's this room that has all these kids, toys, and dolls in it. And it it alone has a creepy factor to it. But in the window, I caught what looks like almost like an E.T. alien with red yeah. eyes looking into the building, not oh. out of the, you know, not oh being in the building, but standing outside the wall looking in. And I'm like, well, and my first thought was, well, is this a car? But thankfully I took three shots. Okay. It's like okay. <laughs> It oh only God. shows up in one photo. And I was like, and I had to zoom in on it because somebody goes, did anybody get anything? And my first glance was no. And then I looked, I was like, wait a minute. There's something in the kids' room. Oh, my goodness. Did you say the kids' room? Yeah, it was a kids' playroom. Wow. Okay. And what? it's three levels. Why would there be a prison in a, a cell in a hospital? Well, that's the big question. I mean, they they had a surgical room. They had a gynecologist room for delivery of babies. So, I mean, it could be, you know, maybe if a patient was too far gone and being a danger to themselves, maybe they put them in the cell. I so yeah. couldn't hurt anybody, but yeah, I, I can't imagine why you would have a cell in a hospital. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's really weird. Um, don't correct me if I'm wrong. I know there's a event because I did some research. Was there a Valentine's 
Valentine's Day massacre in the basement of that hospital. Okay, so there was so there's not a massacre, but what did ha- they, there is a claim that somebody was murdered in the basement, and there's supposed to be the blood on the wall. Toto. But nobody can find the spot where, like, somebody will say, "Oh, it's in this room," and then somebody else will go, "Well, according to this claim, it's in this room." So oh, nobody knows really which room or where it was, but there are a lot of possibilities, I will say. Like, there's one wall that does have, like, red on the brick that could be blood, and it's right next to a, um, I think it's right next to, like, a, mini crematorium or something okay. in there. Oh, okay. And so I'm like, could it be somebody hit them there and then they quickly got rid of the body there? Or I, I you know, it's hard to say. But the one thing too though about Yorktown is they have a lot of windows that are broken. And so we've had possums in there when I was there. Mm. And my God, those will scare the daylights out of you. Because the, you'll be like scanning with your flashlight in the dark. And then all of a sudden you'll see these beady eyes looking back at you. And you'll be like, wait, what? And they don't make a sound until you get too close. Lovely. Oh do you have to book into this location? You do. Okay. So Michael, you don't have the information, do you? Michael, uh, um, wrong. Like information of like how to book it. Book into it. Oh, book it. I, yeah, yeah, there's a website that you book okay. on it. And when I called them, they, I think they said the for a whole night. I think it was like seven hundred and fifty dollars US. Yeah, it's expensive to go there. I was like, yeah. ooh, like I gotta get flights, rental car, like, like hotel. Yeah. That, that that's so, gonna be like a lot. <laughs> so the trick here, Michael, what we do is you get a team of like 10 people, then that 750 turns into $75. Yeah, that's what we do. That's what we do. And so when, it comes yeah, to our- when we get locations that are super expensive, we will get a lot of people to commit to going. So the price just keeps getting lower and lower. Yeah. And you're like, now I can go with comfort. Like I know, sure. I know the same with when we go to Lap Castle, that's about 800 euros but we're going back after christmas and we're going again in a few months after christmas well we're going back in january and we're going back uh, a few months later because i have friends from scotland coming over as well that wants to do lep castle so we'll be taking them to lep castle as well so it is it is an expensive place but you know you'll get your you get your people in so when a team comes over you know and then you get an extra few people in that you know we, we, we wouldn't take anybody with us that we don't know because we're investigating. And and, and if I can say it respectively, it's not a thrill-seeking night. I mean, we'll probably bring it to a location that's not as 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 important, if that makes sense, as yeah. we would research Lep Castle. So it's not like, oh, Ron, oh, my God, did you bleep and hear that? It's kind of like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut <laughs> up. I'm doing audio work. Be quiet. So we'll take people in that has been investigations before. Hey, Megan, that has been investigations before. And, and you know, we'll make, keep the numbers down. We keep the numbers down. And then you get to sleep in these castles as, as well. So, yeah. you know, when we're back in January, it is going to be cold, but the fire is always, always lit. And we normally sleep on the, on the first floor where the fire is lit. We can sleep on the second floor, which is the room that I do not like. I mean, it is not a good room. It is not a good room at all. For women, it's not a good room for women. And I wouldn't allow any females to stay in there by themselves. If they fought me against it, I'll say, fine, it's up to you. Stay if you want to. <laughs> let, me just, let me just get my iPad on you and, and I'll be watching everything that you do from my camera <laughs> downstairs. But if the, you know, I, but from, from when I stay in it, I know when I'm there and I'm calling out and I have the team with me or I have one or two other people with me. Um, I'll, you know, I, I'm, I don't shy away from questions. I, 
um, I called out the questions that people do not want to call out. Oh, Megan, I'm, listen, when I'm back, Megan, I'm going to go live. I'm going to go live from, um, from Lep Castle. We're back out, well, we're in London on the 18th of uh, August. So, so uh, we'll go live from there as well. If you want, Michael, I can give you a few other places in Texas that are near me that won't cost you the arm and a leg like Yorktown that are pretty active. Yeah. If you wanted to okay. add a few spots on. Absolutely. I, I would love that. Yeah. One is Old Park Hotel in Ballinger, Texas. It used to be a brothel. It used to be an antique store. The owners are super awesome. They're Dan and Connie Lafave. And there's a jail. If you donate, I think it's like $230, you mm -hmm. get to donate the jail and the hotel. And the hotel, you get to stay overnight. And they have like 10 themed rooms for you to stay in. Mm -hmm. All related to the life of the hotel. That's okay. cool. And My then, oh, sorry. I was going to say the other two are Fort Walters and Mineral Wells. It's a military base. And Dillon Depot in Cleburne is a funeral home that's really active and really strange. You've been there, haven't you? A few, I have. Two weeks ago, wow. you've been there. Um, Linda, do you know what? Sorry, I'm just getting this question from Linda. Um, does anybody sing in your castles? Would love to. Linda, we actually have uh, we have singing in one of the castles. We have it up on YouTube. I will send it on to you. But we do have one of the singing in one of the castles that we're going back to in January. Um, and it, it, it's in a room that we have never done before because it's always been locked. And now the last time we went, it was unlocked. Uh, does Lep Castle have a succubus? Uh, we know there's an elemental there, a succubus. Uh, we have to get Nile Lou's husband in a room by himself. And, you know, he, he let us know if there's a succubus in, oh, oh uh, you know, the two Michaels, if you come over to Lep Castle, you know, we'll put you into a room and find out if there's a succubus there. So well, sounds like fun. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> sounds like fun. Sucky bus. Yeah. So there's I think <laughs> I know. I think I know more of the element <laughs> in Lep Castle than I do of a sucky bus. So I but I think you're right, Megan. I think you're right that there would be look at Michael is so looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just to investigate in Ireland, it sounds like, you know, why not? Michael's thinking now he's coming over to Lep Castle. Um, <laughs> Megan, you got, you got Michael there. You got Michael. What was that? Oh, the laughing face. That's Louise. That's Louise. She, like, Louise is Emerald Isle. That's Lulu. Linda was asking earlier, are there a lot of uh, earthquakes in the UK? No. No. You'd probably get a very, very slight tremble, even though I'm in Ireland, but we would have the same, you know, tremors a wee bit because we're so close to each other. But you would have a tremor, say, once in a million years, I think. we It's so light, you wouldn't even feel it. <laughs> hey, Michael's not torture there. <laughs> no. Not torture. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're making me rethink that, Linda. <laughs> I know. But let me, let me, Lulu, if you're there, look up. Is there, I'm going to, I, I mean, we, we always hunt to Google. Uh, and I'm Googling it. Well, while you're doing that, Lulu. what other states are you looking at uh, investigating in, Michael? Uh, well, I'll just kind of release for this year. Um, so next month I'm going to Monticello, Iowa. It's an old, it's called an Emberg Manor, which is an, a poor county farm. Uh, I'm doing that one. And then Libby, it's the hotel in October. And then November, I'll be going to, uh, what is it called? Uh, Williamson, West Virginia to investigate the old College Hill Hospital. That's, oh wow! Uh, my, my my remaining schedule for the year. 
Yeah, I'll be curious to see what you have happen at Old College Hill because I've been noticing on TikTok that location seems to be blowing up all over TikTok lately. Yeah, it is, and I only know only found it because I'm. Have you heard of this show? They also have a YouTube channel. Um, on on the show, it's called Destination Fear. Have you heard of them? Love yes, it. they're Project Fear now. Love it. Yeah, on YouTube. We Cause, love cause them. Because the TV show wouldn't let them take that name. So they're like, oh, we'll just call ourselves Project Fear. Yeah. And still keep yeah. going. Yeah. yeah really. and, and they um just from, I watched like their episode. I was like, oh my God, like this place is like, it, it, it's scary. Even like just walking through the hallways and stuff, even when, it, when you're like with someone, it's just like, just so creepy and stuff. And I think they, in that episode, they were having a challenge like, one person they pick from this hat has to go in that building by themselves for like who, who knows how long or the overnight like, sleep yeah yeah and i was like oh my god like that place here but you know what i really want to go there and just experience it because like hospitals just have so much like energy and i yeah. just really want to be able to you know find intelligent responses and just i don't know it's just kind of like another experience really and hopefully it would be – I'm excited for the opportunity to um, go there and see what I can find. I would love – We, yeah. I think – I was literally saying we have a home in two another time we were there. This is in one of the castles. This would be in Redwood Castle where we go to. We love – the Redwood Castle is the one where I'm more comfortable sitting in. Like I've sat in Redwood Castle by myself and I don't feel like I have to kind of like – find the exit now we do go up onto the roof of the castle and let me tell you though this is a castle roof we're going on to so the windows are not like your windows that we have today these are castle windows so i mean there's many a stomach being sucked in we have done this live when you're going through the castle windows where you're sucking your body in and you're pushing all your body bits in so you can get through this little narrow window michael it's going to be great for you but us <laughs> We have to like hold our body bits in to get through this window and to get out onto the castle roof. And many a ball has been left behind by the boys because it's a narrow window. <laughs> it's a narrow window. <laughs> <laughs> narrow. It's a, yeah, did I say that narrow? It's a narrow. It's a narrow. Narrow. Did I say that? Is that how you say it? Narrow? Narrow. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Is there That's a U in it? Up. What? Is there a, what, a U in it? <laughs> <laughs> now they're going to start taking the piss of my accent. Okay, okay. Wait, hold, hold, hold up. Okay. This okay. is the word I want you to say. So this is how I say it. Bloody. Now you say bloody. Bloody. <laughs> <laughs> bloody. It's just like, bloody hell. Bloody hell. That was English. <laughs> bloody. All right, bloody hell. <sighs> Bloody head. <laughs> okay, look. Like, oh, I, I God, think, my accent came out. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you, you know, um, Gordon Ramsay, right, Jenny? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, like whenever like he's in the kitchen berating the chefs, he'd be like, "Bloody hell!" Or just the way, you, like, you definitely have a similar, <laughs> similar. Act. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like funny. I, I'm not like, making fun. I'm just. <laughs> 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 it, it, it's just like the way you say it, like, I'm like it, it's like it's like here for example. I don't know if Michael from Texas can like relate. So people from the East Coast, so obviously people in the West, we say water, and then they'll and then in the East Coast we'll be like water or water or something else. Like, water. Like, Especially if you get to the Northeast, you cannot <laughs> understand a word they're saying. Like for example, another one, I would say Maryland. They'd be like, and then the people that are from there, they'd Maryland. be like, Merlin, Merlin, or something. Merlin. I was like, Merlin. I was like, was there a U in it? Merlin? Or something like that? What did I, so I said narrow. Narrow. I, it's narrow. It's mind from narrow. Chicago, it's, it's narrow. Mirror. And he goes, mirror. And I'm like, yeah, he goes, it's mirror. And I'm like, it's not mirror, it's mirror. And I, I say know. boat, and he goes, boat. And I'm like, it's boat. And he goes, boat, boat. And I'm like, no, it's boat. And I'm going to London. So when I, like we were talking about my brother, who obviously lived in Ireland and went over to the UK. He was like, oh, you know. <laughs> and he's like, bye, see you later, slan. And then he comes home and he goes, all right, sense. 
So when I go to London now in the 18th, I'd be like, all right, Louise, all right, no, all right, Michael. I come home with a London accent, and my friend Tracy is from Essex, and she says, all right, doll. So I think I get it from, because you know when you have these people who pick up accents, like, so easily. So I'd say, uh, now, and that's like a Northern accent. So instead of saying now in the South, I'd say now. So up in the North of Ireland, they go, what about you now? So I picked up the Northern accent and then I'd have my Irish accent. And then, because I don't think I have an Irish accent. And then, do I have an Irish accent? Sure, to be sure. We don't say potatoes, top of the morning to you. Like I said, we don't say top of the morning to you. No, we would say, where's my... She's a three. What, what no, is this about three? Is the UK. Three is like say three because in the UK they say free. You know, three. 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 Look, oh, there's Lily. Three. You say free. All right, one, two, free. So when we say the word three, like you either say the th or we say tree, which looks like a tree in the field. So in the UK, you go free, and then in Ireland, it's like tree. So it's like one, two, three. So people say, is, is it a forest? I was going to say tree. I know, right? So are you in a forest? I'm like, no, it's one, two, three. <laughs> well, I say, no, I can't even say in house, three, three, three. All right, one, two, three, three. Oh, Lord. So I pick up accents so easily. And then I say, you all are trying to like, oh, oh you Americans are trying to oh. fucking, fucking kill me. Like when we're doing shows at two and three in the morning. And, you know, kind of like Jenny, you know, it's like daylight here. And I'm like, I know it's daylight. I know. <laughs> so I keep saying, y'all, what are y'all doing? <laughs> Instead of like, what are you all doing? What are y'all doing? Except it's not y'all. It's y'all. It's just one flat. It's not two words. It's just one Yaw. fluid word. Y'all. Y'all. Y L L. Y'all. What are y'all doing? What are you... There you go. <laughs> you got <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Michael, I was going to tell you with you mentioning destination fear, when they went to the Nazareth Hospital in Mineral Wells, if you remember that episode. I do not. Okay. I think it's in season three. But the doll that what Chelsea... Season? What season? Uh, season three, I believe. Three. 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 Tray. <laughs> but uh, the doll that Chelsea Layden got uh, spooked by is in the Fort Walters building. Oh, really? Oh. They, they brought it over because oh they God. had to close the other location. Wow. <laughs> That's creepy. So what was the place called, Michael, from Texas? It, it was, well, the one that was closed is Old Nazareth, but the, the new location is Fort Walters. Oh, I've heard about that place. I've I'd been there a few times. I would oh, love to go to America to, to investigate yeah, that place is legit. It's just have to get, we have to fly over, and that's like what an eight hour journey. Yeah, that's not that bad. Let me tell you now, <laughs> paranormal. I have to fly to London uh, on the 18th of August, right? And I have to call my doctor up for some Xanax because I don't like to fly. And Paul Louise and Niall have to fly with me. And I said to them, Can I please just even on the flight over, can I sit by the window? Because I have to be by the window. I can't be in the middle and I can't be on the outside because someone walks by me and elbows me. Elbows me you know, like the el that I'm like. You, you know, you know there is another way you can do it, Jen. Take a cruise ship across. Yeah. That I've probably, done it. I what from, like from Ireland over to the UK. No, yeah. I've done a cruise ship from Rome to the US. I, but it's only it's about an hour's flight or less. It's about it's about fifty minute flight. Right. But listen, even me being in an airport, I went over to London in May to my friend Tracy, and I've every time I've flown, I've always had someone with me to chaperone me. Look at the 
gates look where we'll get on the right plane because I probably would have uh, now we are 20 minutes of London and Barcelona and I'm supposed to be in London because I'd know, known me I'd get on the wrong plane so I, I managed to get the right <laughs> but when I was sitting there at the bar with my daughter and it was like ding 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 last call for Barcelona and I'm like oh my god and I was joking before I said I was going to get on a plane to Barcelona and there was like you know the last flight you know last call for Barcelona but anyway I managed to direct myself in the airport where normally I shut down and don't look at me don't talk to me leave me alone but I managed to do it I did it and I did it in London when I was in London no yeah whatever Stan said airport coming back to Ireland and I managed to direct me and my 19 year old daughter you know, she wasn't going to do it for me, so I had to take over, and I did it. I bloody did it. But now we have Louise and Nile that's going to take over while I sit in the bar and have gin and tonic. Yeah, Michael's probably laughing with me, thinking it's funny that you think you could get on the wrong plane and go somewhere <laughs> you don't, you don't have a ticket for. <laughs> <laughs> no, I may. I probably would. No, me. Wait, because the first thing I say when I get onto a flight. And they were like, "What?" I'm like, "I don't like." Because the last time I said it with me, saying like, "I don't like to fly," like, "I don't." Want, you might come apart. I don't like to fly. What was that? I don't like to fly. Because I was like upset. I was upset, and she goes, "No, you okay?" So me and my daughter were standing literally two, almost a foot into the cockpit. Like we were loud in the cockpit, and and the co the pilots were talking to me, and one gave me his bottle of water. This is before we even sat down on our seats. And I was like, and anyway, and the guy, I think he was Italian. It's okay. I have my what? Uh, you know, and I'm like, oh my God, your parents look like you. Oh my God. They can, <laughs> oh my God, you are fucking gorgeous. You know, and that, I'm like, you're, you're flying me. <laughs> Okie dokie. <laughs> like, oh my God. I mean, hello. But the pilot, oh my God. Anyway, we're getting totally off that subject. I, I can just see Jen sitting in the cockpit going, see this standby seat? I'll be here for the rest of the flight. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and, I try, and I kept the water of, that the, the, the pilot gave me. I kept it. But leaving the UK to come back to Ireland, they discarded my bottle. I'm like, oh no. That was my pilot's water that came from a pilot because I have a book my friend gave me called Fear of Flying. Mm -hmm. I got to page three and I didn't read any more of it, but I'm, I think I'm getting okay. <laughs> hey, Jenny, you know, get your fear over flying. What, Michael? And I did this and you're probably going to be like, hell no. But I, I did this. I did this on my birthday like two Oh, uh, actually, like last year, last year, and yeah, and pretty much I went skydiving. <laughs> I know, I, I I know what you feel right now. You're like, hell no, I'm not gonna ever do that. No, I, did you hear my little? <laughs> it's like I'll tell you, it was scary at first for me because I'm not like scared of, like heights, but like when you're sitting in the plane and it was Tam, Tam jump like skydiving so like you're attached to someone but i'm like looking out the window and this plane was kind of sketchy already because there's duct tape on the inside covering like these like windows and like parts <laughs> of the wall like <laughs> I, I was like I, 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 the plane some parts of it and then we're flying for like 25 minutes this was in idaho and it was it was a great experience don't get me wrong i'm here obviously i'm i'm so alive and <laughs> i um and then after that, this is actually on YouTube. I can send you guys a link. You can literally watch yeah. this. But it's okay. called D Zone or Drop Zone. That's what they're called. And when I show it to sign, you literally, when you sign the paper, you're practically signing your life away saying you cannot sue them if you die. Well, no, but can you haunt them? Because I don't know, probably. Probably will. You can haunt but, anybody. Yeah. How but, do you sue them if you pass away? You have the family um, members. Um, I, I, I have a will. You are a will. Okay. Oh God. So that's probably what they would go to next if, if I had to, I guess, take legal actions, like someone for me in a way. But yeah. overall, they they open the door, and I'm looking down, and you the camera because oh, yeah. the guy has a. The guy has a GoPro on his wrist, and he, he tells, like, look at me. I'm like, 
uh, okay, I, I, I guess I'm actually doing this now. And then yeah. he's like, all right, put your left foot, your right foot on this like foot rest of the plane. <laughs> we got up. So like, so I'm like getting up, I'm like, like this. And then he was like, cause it was my birthday. He's like, happy birthday. And then we looked at backflip off this plane and you're falling for 60 seconds before you pull a parachute. You're falling at 120 miles an hour. I, I think that's like, I don't know, 230, 220 kilometers per hour. I don't, I don't know if that's how you guys read it in, mm. in um, Ireland, but you're falling really fast. We just call and, it falling from a plane. We don't yeah. know how fast it's going. We just know we're falling from a plane. Yeah, and we were falling for 60 <laughs> seconds. Just felt like I was really falling forever. And then after he pulled oh, wow. the parachute, and then he was like, show me, this is how you like, um land because when you're like when you have your shoot you want to go against the wind otherwise you're gonna get blown away and then after okay. that um, we landed and i'm like we did it and then i was like awesome and then mm -hmm. after that i just went home and celebrated my birthday and yeah that, that, that was a lot of fun but it was definitely scary at the same time don't get me wrong <clears throat> were you yeah. wishing you had a change of clothes i was gonna say you know <laughs> i mean it was a time when my um to get what flight no it was my very first flight i think it was and i was in the bathroom so i kind of made my and let me tell you half these uh air stewards i'd have to thank them forever because one would come up to me and put her hand on my lap on the taxi now to run away i know everything about taxi and the black box i know everything about the planes i'm just still afraid of them and i one would come up and put her hand on my lap and she goes, are you okay? And then when she leaves, there's two little mini bottles of vodka on my lap with a coke. And I'm like, okay. Oh yeah. People say, don't drink when you fly. That doesn't stand for me uh, because it just doesn't. But I went to the bathroom. Let me tell you, right. I flushed that toilet. When I was washing my hands, I flushed the toilet. The air sucked my soul. I'm so glad I wasn't still sitting on it because it probably would have sucked my insides out. That that airplane, oh, yeah. toilet, you know when you flush a toilet and they have this huge sound, like like the, the suction, it would have took my soul with it if I had oh. a soul sitting on the toilet. I literally jumped. No, you won't, Louise. My birthday's next month. And no, I'll take, I'll take a bottle of Hendrix gin and that would be great. Thank you very much. But, um, <laughs> I almost did a skydiving for a Greyhound rescue here in Ireland. I was going to do skydiving. And someone said to me, Jenny, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. What am I doing? I'll just stand in the town with a bucket and say, you know, help the Greyhounds, you know, and don't jump from a plane because, one, I can't get into them. But um, uh, that's been so, I remember going, uh, when I had to fly over to London in May and I was going to Offaly, uh we're going to redwood castle and i was sitting on the train to go to dublin to meet Louis, lulu and i was talking to this guy and he goes what are you doing for the weekend and i'm like oh i'm doing this and doing that blah 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 blah. and then i have to go to the uk and he goes and i said i'm so afraid i'm so afraid it just turned out that he teaches fear of flying fear uh fly fearless he teaches a course like that up inside dublin airport and he was giving me all of these information and, and like little things I can go by. And I'm like, oh my God, if all the people in all the world and all the places we met on a train when I'm going to Dublin and you can tell me, you know, how to calm down when I fly. But yeah, two weeks now before I have to fly and I keep forgetting. But the good thing is I've forgotten about it because I haven't talked about it apart from the last half an hour here on the show. <laughs> God reminded me about that I have to fly. <laughs> anyway, let's move away from flying. No, I'm just kind of, it threw me at first when you said he wrote books about having fear flying. And I was like, wait, why are you writing a book making people afraid to fly? <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Oh, no. Fear <laughs> That's fly. the easy part. <laughs> fear, fear, I could write that book. Why? And I don't know what it is. Is it a control thing? Is it because, you know, I, I hate when the, when the wheels lift off the ground because I'm not on the same land. I'm not here in two seconds to come home to my children or my dogs. You know, I'm Actually, not here. I can tell you where the fear is. It's because you have given up complete control of anything. There is, you are completely 100% at the mercy of that plane while in air. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm a controller. I'm not a control. I'm not a bike controller, but I like to control. Not control. That sounds really. <laughs> I like to, you know. You know <laughs> I went up to my dad, and there was Michael dancing, and I thought, can he hear my Beyonce mu music? He goes, no. He was just dancing by himself, and I'm like, okay, okay. If I thought my Beyonce music was too loud, um, Megan saying take CBD. Listen, when we were going through. Yeah, I'm a Virgo, Linda. I'm a Virgo. I like things to be perfect. <laughs> Michael? <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Me and Michael have control of this, so yeah. Um, I liked, I like, and my, I'm laughing at Linda because I said this the other night. Along with your phone, run the show on your computer, mute it, then you can read the chats very easily. Is that when I kind of muted myself and started, you know, using my language? My little yes. language. Is it? Because I said that to my oh, the fly landed on me. I call them kamikaze flies because they want to land on you every two seconds. And I'm going, oh, I'd swat it. But anyhow. One of these days, I'm going to unmute you while you're muted just to see your reaction. Yeah. <laughs> Do it. I never thought of that, actually. Because I would like to be on a rant, you know. I'll, oh, the Lord. If I have something to say and I have to mute myself, I'll mute it. And then... You will hear. I mean, on your head be it. On your head be it. <laughs> if I mute myself, on your head be it. If I... If Maybe on our chit-chat. Maybe on our chit-chat <laughs> show. <laughs> Just say something that... Uh, what was that? That suggestion so... What was that? That suggestion so Michael would stay seated. Which might... Michael P.N.? Yeah. Michael Texas. Michael Texas, Michael P.N. That no, was me. It's me. It's about the channel. You can open your computer, mute the. Oh uh, yeah. Mute the computer oh. side. Yeah. Oh P.N. P.N. <laughs> Louise, I'll get your birthday for you. Sky die from Fancho. <laughs> yeah, I'm like sitting here thinking, I've been in my seat this whole time. Why are you making suggestions to keep me in my seat? I know. <laughs> I know. Okay, it's I don't a know. Game. I know. It's another question now for Michael P.N. What is your favorite location? My favorite location? Favorite, favorite, favorite location. <sighs> I know it's a lot. Um, I Maybe would some. say favorite location. I've been here before. I, I have it on YouTube. It's like my first time going to this hospital um, in my state. That's like an hour away, which is really nice. But whenever I go there, I usually just go just for fun. It's kind of like, in a way, like training, just kind of try a bunch of different equipments because they have equipment that you can borrow. Um, it's called the St. Ignatius Hospital. It's a Catholic hospital. And mainly I um, go there to really, there's like a, a group of people that, um, they're not like a group, their own group, but it's like a bunch of people from that area that comes together and we just, um, pay like how much per person is like a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. And then we go do our investigations and we'll um, do like Etsy session. We'll use a SLS camera. And the one time, the second time I was there, I was honestly, I literally ran for my life cause I was so scared. Mm -hmm. <gasps> it was, this was not on camera. I, I was recording it. Then when I transferred my computer, I saved it under this file. And then when I tried to find it, I couldn't find it, but pretty much, I was on the second floor and there's everyone, there's like five, six people Two of them. They're like the tour guys that has to be there obviously for us. Yeah. And everyone's sitting on the floor. I'm like down and I'm also wearing this hospital gown, just kind of like blending in with the patients and it's dark. And I, I, I was just like, my attention was just span this portion of the hallway. So this long hallway, I don't know. It's like maybe the length of a football field. So I was like, on wow. this side, everyone's maybe like a couple, three, four hundred feet behind me sitting on the ends of the hallway. And I hear like some sort of like, <laughs> and all the windows are boarded up too. I hear like something's like kind of walking. And like, I'm like, what is that? I don't see it. And um, next thing you know, you, it's like someone's like shuffling on like the floor, like kind of almost like they're running. 
And when I heard that, I literally just turned around and ran to the other side of the hallway. And I'm like breathing super hard and like literally screaming. And I'm like, oh my God, like get me out of this building. Like I was terrified. And whenever uh, I'm on my friend, her name's Elizabeth. She um, does tours there. And sometimes she'll go like every other weekend or so she'll go and do like tour, um, like investigations. And she, whenever she does tours, she always like tells the experience of me, of my experience, me just running for my life screaming. And like, I was like, God damn it. You didn't, uh, well, they don't, they don't know who I am. So you can tell it, but it's just like, ah, yeah. uh, I don't want to, that wasn't me. <laughs> But that place is my favorite. It's definitely um, good vibes with people. And it's just like I've been there so much. It's something that um, I, I love to go just uh, um, for fun and help me prepare for an actual location where I will go film in the future. It, awesome. it's, like, it's, like, it's like the playground of the paranormal. You can go there. Oh, nice. Yeah. So there's a question here from Lulu. Emerald Isle Paranormal Researchers. See how I said that so easily. A lot of people find it so hard to say. It's Emerald Isle Paranormal Researchers. Uh, so Louise is saying, before starting an investigation, do you feel you need to ground yourself? And the more you have been involved with the paranormal, do you feel like you are becoming more connected to it? Like, is it just... Um, I feel like... Um, we... we I guess kind of what you mean by like ground yourself, like kind of like right. how to like prepare yourself. Like protection. Oh, protection. Yeah. Yeah. I always just mainly think positively and um, sometimes, I mean, I don't know if like other people are like religious, but I am not like fully, but kind of like in the yeah. middle. Yeah. And yeah. I always like, I say a prayer, like help mm -hmm. keep me safe and watch nothing like hurts me or is attached to me and after that i go in and i i always come with open arms i don't like mm. i don't go out taunting or trying to attract provoking or anything they, like that, yeah provoke yeah. no because it's like going yeah. to someone's house you're not just gonna go start to That's disrespect so bloody right what you say about going into someone else's home no matter what it was you know you're going into someone else's home that you don't provoke yeah I, I never provoke. I, I don't see the point. Oh. In it. <laughs> like in the me. song. You know that song? Just yeah, like, like you, they want to be close to you. Now you. I'm singing. I'm, Lena, you got me singing. <laughs> don't get me singing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know that I song. I love that. I love that. I'll, I'll start singing again. I'll start singing. The only prayer I say is, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, when I'm running. <laughs> Actually, oh. I can attest to that because I've seen it on lives. <laughs> you probably have. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Sing it, Jen. Give me another song. <laughs> Sing it. Sing it, Jenny. Friends <laughs> like me. Oh, come on. We got to hear it. Go on, Jenny. Oh, I can't Sing it with her. heart. Sing with your heart. Come on, you gotta unmute that. Sing with your heart. Jeez, oh, okay. Oh, come I on. couldn't unmute her. I yeah. tried. I, <laughs> the power. <laughs> Just like me, they long to be close to you. Yeah. No, that's all you're getting. Right. Shut up. Oh, come on. I was getting to the good part. <laughs> you got enough. You got a line out of me. That's enough. And I never sing, holy lot. I sing right, when right. I'm on my own when I'm in private. <laughs> now you got me thinking about Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I know. Why? That was all I was thinking, too. Because that's where that song was in. It was like the happy song in the movie. <laughs> I didn't know they sang that in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. Did they? Yes, they did. The Gene yes. Wilder version. No, I don't think I hear it. And I love yeah. that movie. Did they? No, I have they to watch it in the chocolate factory tonight. <laughs> I watched an insidious movie last night, The Red Door. Did you finally get through it? No, I fell asleep. <laughs> I lit my fire and I fell asleep. <laughs> Wait, you live you light fire in my summer? Fire, my fire is lit right now. 
by fire. Okay, how, how, how cold is it there? Um, well, I, I like, that's why my teeth are probably rosy. Um, I mean, what, I, it, I w <laughs> what's the weather here? It is, it is 14 uh, Celsius. So I'll put it into Fahrenheit. So that's what that's like 60 or 65, right? That's, or like, no, that's like 70. That's what y'all do. So it's like 70 there? 57 Fahrenheit. 57? Okay. That's so a little chilly. Yeah. I mean, I, mean I, I guess that's a good temperature, but like, I don't know, 57 still kind of feels warm. It is, it is warm, but I like my fire lit. See, when it comes to dark evenings, even though it's like, you know, quarter past 11 here, but it gets dark about, before we do the show, it begins to get dark. But I love my fire lit. And sometimes I move my computer over there so then you can see my fire and it's all homely and nice. But then on Halloween, we have to decorate the whole thing. Why does my camera always go blurry? I do not know why. It's gone blurry. Oh, no, it's coming back. Oh. oh. Is that Frankie? She's disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> you all want me to sing again? No, I'm joking. Michael, why don't we say a, sing a song? PN. Not Texas. PN. Sing a song. Me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, let's all sing a song because I sang. Let's all sing. Well, do you, uh, I think the Michael from Texas might know a song. Um, it's called Take Me Home by Eddie Money. Do you know that one? Oh, yeah. Oh. Take me home tonight. I don't want to let you go to see the light. Take me home tonight. And then. That's, I don't know. The, the next part's kind of like this female artist, or I don't know. It's like she sings that song very high pitch. I not high pitch, but like I, I don't. I'm not gonna sing that part. Do you no? Do you high pitch? I was gonna say do you high no. pitch. No. Oh, go on. I got so excited. I bit the inside of my jaw, but so now you have to. <laughs> no, I'm good. Oh, uh, hands up, everyone. He wants Michael. PN. To do a high <laughs> go on, try Michael, try Michael, Michael, Michael. I'm gonna lose my voice. It's okay. We're here. Wait, 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 with family. We're here. I'm good. Look at Louise. No, Louise, look, Louise has a hands up. Oh, now you see Lulu's Emerald Isle. Emerald Isle. Let's do I, it. I, I think I, I think I see like one of those like when people sleep with Z's. I think that's why I see no, on there. Don't. No, you don't. Look, high five. Look, you see? Oh, come on now. They're all waiting for you. Come on, Michael. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> oh, definitely pressure. Oh, no. But oh, let, let's see Michael from Texas. Okay, Michael from Texas. Some vocals. Come on. Yeah, I don't sing. Let's just say you I even got kicked out of church choir. I, let, listen, co-host, I don't sing, but I sound close to you. I could sing another song. Uh, no, I'm not going to sing that song, actually. No, because uh, it just came into my head. Do your falsetto. I don't no. even know a song offhand. Sing and listen. Oh, oh, Michael P.N., Michael P.N. Guess who's Michael from Texas? Uh, favorite group is and you're gonna say oh what is michael from texas favorite group new kids in the block new kids on the block i was waiting to hear this answer too i was like wait who's my you favorite know, you know them. do you know them <laughs> uh they might be before so, his time it sounds familiar I but I, I i'm honestly not sure that's just crazy when you say you're not hey oh, sasha uh my bedroom wall me and Michael were talking here last week about New Kids in the Block. And I said, what song just do you like? He goes, New Kids in the Block. I'm like, shut the your block. front door. You love New Kids in the Block? I love New Kids in the Block. My ceiling and wall, you could not see of the posters. I was obsessed with Joey McIntyre. And I can't believe I remember his full name. And then a few years ago, well, my daughter's 20 now, but when she was about two or three years of age, New Kids in the Block and Backstreet Boys came to Dublin as a, a group, you know, as one wow. full group. And I went, me and my sisters went to see them. No. You know this one. You gotta sing it. Uh-uh. 
Say it. Say it. Hey, go. That's so crazy, Can you believe me, Michael? <laughs> oh my goodness. Does anybody remember New Kids in the Block? Hi, Levy. Levy, you're coming into New Kids in the Block. Like, I mean, it's not my fault. It's this Michael's fault that he's playing Good New Kids. Good afternoon. <laughs> we, we played, uh, we went to see them. And then when, when they came out on the stage, I was kind of like, you know, I'm not going to say what age I was at, but I was kind of like, you know, I ended up crying. I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God. You know, they came out on the stage. Anyway, that's enough of that one. I was going to say to you, uh, Michael, I was going to say what was your scariest moment, but you said that already. Your scariest moment when you were in. Oh. <laughs> oh, Michael, do you know them? <laughs> oh, Levy, you know Michael, <laughs> Levy. Do you know them? Yeah. So when, my daughter's text me to, to get her some food. <laughs> no. Um, you know, she wants me to order some food for her. Um, there was a question I was going to ask you and I forget. Oh, your favorite locations. Your favorite locations that, or not your favorite locations, your locations that you would love to go to. Um, that would be honestly, this is out of the country, but the ancient Hi. Ram Inn. Because yeah. I hear I hear that they have the succubus there. Oh my god. <laughs> they do they do. They do. It's been is, it, is every location just has that? That's like yeah. outside playing like some foreign country. Well in I know in the in in um in Lep Castle they have the uh, incubus. Not the succubus, they have the incubus. So is that like the angel and the devil? Yeah. Is yeah. that kind of what it is? And that's in the one room where I won't stay in. And I have, oh, Michael, I have to send you that audio from it. It is probably one of the best audio I've ever heard from that one particular room at that location. Oh, really? Um, wow. Yeah, that's that's the room that I knew. Yeah, the sucky bus is the female and the inky bus is the male. And then so if they had sex, what would you call that child? I can't even with you. I just can't. Well, I don't know. Bus. Like Now you have a bloody thinking. Other bus? <laughs> <laughs> you get the in, the out, the other. <laughs> All right, I guess that works. Now I have to think of what they would call there has to be a name for it. No. I don't know that they ever actually have had kids. Omnibus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. Omnibus. Omnibus. What's this? <laughs> Levy is on duty's K9 units in is that California? Yes. Yes. And California. And on duty's K9. So are you working with the dogs? Uh, canine right. units, yes, those would be dogs. Yeah, I oh, the lord, I love dogs. I love dogs. I love dogs too. I work in rescue, so and I'm a dog groomer. I make your ugly dogs look pretty. I make them I take offense to that because I don't think my dogs ever look ugly. What are your dog? <laughs> Some people's dogs, you know, they come in. So I promise I brush my dogs every day, but like, yeah, don't. Like telling a hairdresser you don't cut your own hair. Do. Not really. <clears throat> uh, oh, my daughter's driving me crazy. So, other locations that you would love to go to, Michael? Other ones, I would say. Uh, <clears throat> oh. I want to do like the Villesca, no, no, the Conjuring House in, I think they're in New Jersey. Yes. We had a yeah. guest on a show a few weeks ago who owned the Conjuring House. Yeah. Yeah, that was quite interesting. Yeah, it's a very, I don't know, it's, because I know that, didn't they make a movie about it too? Yeah, they did, yeah, the Conjuring yeah. House, Ed and Lorraine Warren, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. did you see the movie? Yeah. I don't know, I, 
I would love to go there just just probably vast history and just yeah you know like right right now like I, I think they already sold the house to a new owner but yeah at the mm -hmm. time they're selling it for like a couple million dollars for that little house like that thing's worth that much but I guess obviously because it's haunted but I was like wow this this place is like I don't know yeah it's also a lot about movies so. but yeah they did they did start off um the house what about the house in between the house uh the house between was actually really really good it's a documentary there's and, two uh, oh, yeah the series one and series two i have to say fantastic now you know when things excuse me are made for entertainment and so on yeah so you don't know if this you know if it's real or not i would suggest having a look at it i'll send you the links of it but i did find it interesting i did find it interesting uh and it caught my attention and it takes a lot to catch my attention you know thinking like tv and all this bull crap mm -hmm. but it did catch my attention the house between i liked it yeah, i liked absolutely. it absolutely. um <clears throat> we are going to head off now because it's come up to the two hour mark and i know michael from texas okay. has to do an investigation we could talk all night but we will talk later on uh michael where can people find you i know i have your links on the on the um post but where can people find you um you can find me on youtube that's a great spot to start off if you just go on youtube yeah. type in p n paranormal and it's the one that has i think it's it should be the first um channel that pops up Yep. And if you go into my abouts, I'll have my Facebook and Instagram. And I believe TikTok on there too. And then you just click on those links and then it'll take you to all of my other pages. And like uh, it's that will that's where you'll find me. And we have more content coming up right now. It's just right now it's you know, I've been just kind of taking a little break and been mm. just kind of enjoying summer and not just feel like I have to do all the editing all the time. I just want to like enjoy myself. But there will be content coming soon. I Right now, with just editing, it does take a very, very long time, but I want to make sure that the content is literally above par and literally That's the nice. best. So yeah. be prepared for more content coming soon. And other than that, I'm very excited for the opportunity to come travel to these other locations in the States. And um, I don't know what next year will bring, but I do know that there'll be some great locations coming up we are soon looking and forward to it so much yes. we are so looking forward to what you have to show absolutely i mean and I overall <clears throat> so oh, i'm sorry no 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 uh, just... just... <clears throat> all right um <throat> overall just like thank you for having me on the show i'm very very blessed very happy and i love just thank talking you. about and sharing my findings also love watching your podcast too and you know i love the guests thank that you bring you. on and you guys do a great job thank you so so much oh. uh -huh. Gosh, I'm just taking my fire. My legs didn't go right, but thank you so. We really appreciate that so much. Appreciate it coming from you. Like, you know, we do watch your YouTube's, and we are so looking forward to what you're going to come up with next. Well, you never know. It's a surprise. It's a surprise. It's, it's a surprise. <laughs> if there's one thing, this is kind of one thing I kind of do regret, but I'm I'm not like, you know, it, I'm not like sad about it, but. When I started a channel, I, I do wish I, I would have filmed like 10 different locations, edit all of them first, and then after I feel slowly release content because it's kind of difficult where you release content. Then you have to go investigate, then you go edit, and then it's like two months later, then you release. Well, I, I want That's kind of like what I'm going to try to do right now to make it more easier because I know people are like expecting you to put out a, a, a video like once every two weeks. or It's then, a lot. It's, it's a, a lot, lot for sure. So it's that's kind of where I'm going to like give myself a little bit more space and just kind of create a bunch first and just kind yeah, of go from there. Lot. I know I, Lulu on the team. She does all the editing as well. And I know she gets tired and she works long hours and so on. So it's, it's, and I have to do all the, I'm going to do audio work after tonight. I'm going to start doing more audio work. I have two or three investigations of audio that I have to do, but I have to get stuck into it. I have to do it. Now there's Lulu saying it's so time consuming, you know? It is, it is. It is. But but again, I obviously want to be able to grow the channel, make it a successful one. But again, yeah. I really love learning history and be able to make connections and meet people and be able to 
be authentic. And I get it. People want entertain where if you fake something, yeah, this will give you more views. And honestly, I, that's cool. Yeah. But again, that's like something I don't really want to portray it as because it's like mm. for, like for example, there's this person on, on this YouTube channel. I don't know if they make videos anymore, but it was like a few years ago. His video would get millions of views because he would put something. This is he does in his backyard. Let's just say he puts a microwave. He puts like a barbed wire fence. He would yeah. jump off this picnic table and hurt himself to get views. And like he's pretty much portraying as his character mm. to get views. And like if I portray myself as someone who fakes stuff, and I'm not saying they're doing a bad thing, then that's kind of like the person you have to be now to make these contents as time goes on. You can right. never have a boring content after that because you've hyped it up in the beginning. So you've got to keep with the hype up. You can't just go from starting off to, you know, um, low and then on a high. Like that's what we, not that we do a high, low and a high. We literally put up exactly what we get. We are so annoyed with anything that's false. Why do you go and do false? You spend money, you spend hours doing this stuff. Yeah. I mean, just that for me, it, it, I don't even have to bleep myself when I say gobshites. Absolutely yeah. gobshites who do that stuff. And I have heard of people throwing stones and paying people to throw stones or being arseholes to do yeah. this stuff. I, mean, like, I just want to not deal with you. Well, you I, again, and also too, like, and this will be the last thing because I know we're about two hours. So. <laughs> Um, I literally know that there's always still room for improvement, which there is like continue to improve my voice acting when I narrate. That's definitely one of the hardest things I'm still struggling with, but I practice every time when I get a chance to do that I and understand. just be able to learn different little techniques to work smarter, not harder. And I kind of, I do have a right. system where I can be able to do this. Then after I go back and do this part and then go back and you know, just kind of like make it so I'm not having to do all this at once as I'm moving through all my clips because that just makes yeah. it hard. But well, again, there's work harder, not harder. Yeah. But again, there's always room for improvement. Hmm. No one's perfect. There's no perfect video. There's a great video, but I always like look, well, this video was awesome at that time, but how can I make this video better than my last yeah. one? And yeah. again, yeah. be yeah. entertaining and I'm just trying to be original and be creative because that's kind of what it is. I don't want to copy someone to now, oh, I, I can get these views if I do this. Like, it's just like, I don't know, that's just not me. I, I like to just be original and creative. I've watched the YouTube videos and they are authentic. They're real. They're not edited. They're not, and I mean, when I say edited, they're not scripted, if that makes sense. You I obviously kinda, have to. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I said, I just kind of go with the flow. That's it. You go through your interview with the, the person who owns the building because you have to do that and then you can, you roll. That's what we do. Uh, Lulu, yeah, when you start reviewing videos, the amount of stuff I can see how people can manipulate content, but I honestly can put up stuff. I can only put up stuff that I can't fully explain, but it will always yeah. be hard to convince people that what you found is real footage, but I'm enjoying the process of trying to make the videos because Louise does all the videos. She really does. And she has found some creme de la creme from Lep Castle, uh, Redwood Castle. I mean, she did one of the videos uh, in Redwood Castle. And I know Michael has to go uh, when the torch was on the table and the torch went out. And she goes, instead of doing all these horror, you know, music in the background, she puts in yeah. a song and sing, Baby When the Lights Go Out. And every time we listen to me, Baby When the Lights Go Out. So every time we watch that bloody video on YouTube and you can see the torch light just going out, because you know when a torch battery fades yeah. and it, goes, it flickers, it flickers, it flickers, this just went out. And Louise Absolutely. puts in the background music, baby, when the lights go out. Louise does all the videos, so she knows good video work. I thank, know, thank, totally. Thank you, Louise. Thank you, Louise. You'll see Louise someday. You'll see Louise sometime, someday. Um, but uh, so she put the music on, baby, when the lights go out. So you got to put a little bit of humor in the, into the background of your. Yeah. You know, but I always curse her every time I watch it because now I'm mailing her at three in the morning when she's working 12 hour shift. And I'm saying, Louise, I'm singing the <laughs> fucking song again because it stays in your mind for like five fucking hours. If that's probably that's just me. Probably that's oh, just yeah. me. 
But <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, if you want to stay in the background, stay there in the background. Just give me one tickety boo. Stay there in the background for a second. We want to say a million thank yous to Michael for PN for coming on first and foremost for giving up your time and and looking forward to watching more of your videos because I I know I love them. I love them. The link is in the um in the post, but I'm going to refresh in the link. When we come off this, I'm going to refresh in the link so people can go and follow you on YouTube. I think YouTube is amazing. Our team now is starting to go on YouTube as well. So that's where we're heading for mostly now is the YouTube. Uh, Michael, Michael from Texas. I can't even do, I can't even do the gun, the gun hole thing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you for coming on and being my co-host tonight. It was fun. Yeah, thank you, Jenny and Michael. Thank you, Michael. Both Mike, I know. I know Michael has to do. Uh, you have to do an investigation. But listen, check in with me later. Let me know if you're doing a live. Let me know. We shall watch it. Let me know if you're doing a live, and I'll post it on my page. Michael Wong, if you want to stay there like for two minutes, I'm going to bring us in the background, play the outro, and we'll talk in a ticket way. Oh my God, I can talk fast when I want to. My mother used to say to me, "Jenny, talk slow." No, you come from a family of 11, you have to talk really fast. <laughs> so let me bring us into the background. <sighs> Five minutes. Anybody who liked, shared, comment. And so that's the Irish thing. No, I'm going to shut up now. Okay, I'm going to shut up. Okay, Michael's swinging on the chair again. 